Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm super excited. It's Friday. It's Cornelia Stephanie Day on Transformation Talk Radio. We have our stories of hope in this hour. And then next hour, we have the Energy Entrepreneur with Diane Solano. So be sure to stay tuned. Now more than ever, you are needed. You are needed in your wealth you're needed in your health, you're needed in your abundance, you're needed in your power. And part of the reason for creating this uh, segment and these stories of hope is because we need stories. We need stories. We need to be able to tell the stories to our children and our grandchildren and our neighbors, the stories of how we healed our life experiences. Telling stories brings people together. And it is my desire to inspire our listeners that all life experiences, struggles, failures, and pains of our past have victories and many happy endings. So no matter where you are in your life, no matter what it is that you're facing, sharing your stories will help others heal as you're going to hear today. It's going to inspire us to keep going and find creative ways to make life living joyous again. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our first guest today. Her name is Katrina Jones, and she's the author of the upcoming book, Bloom Girl Mother. Bloom Girl Mother. She is a wise woman, a teacher, a coach, and a motivational speaker. Welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And Bloom Girl, yes. And you've got your Bloom flowers there in front of you, and I've got mine. I just love it. I love it. And I loved your intro, Cornelia. I just love what you do and what you share. And I too am really passionate about story. Mm. Story is something that is just so fundamental in all cultures. Yes. And it really connects us. Yes. Is that what attracted you to come on today to share your story because you are a storyteller yourself? I believe I am and I believe we all are and it's something that I really kind of learned more about during my teaching career. My background is in teaching and I was a primary school teacher for a number of years and when I started my master's in education I did research on the use of stories and storybooks and picture books as a resource in the classroom and it was always my favorite stimulus in the classroom because it is a way of engaging and connecting in all cultures. So regardless of our nationality, our ethnic group, or our religious or spiritual beliefs, we all connect through story. So yes, I love that. That's so awesome. I, you know, it makes it so much more fun, right? For, uh, for us, to collaborate together. And then of course, for the beloved audience, the beloved community that's inspired by our stories to um, to want to tune in, to want to listen. So do now tell us a story. Tell us a story, any story, anything that you want to inspire us with today. Yes. And you know, as you said that what came into my consciousness and it often comes in, I don't know if you're familiar with or maybe the listeners have um, seen The Wizard of Oz. You know, The Wizard of Oz, it begins in black and white. And then you go into this beautiful transformation of color and vibrance and characters and joy and fun and excitement and adventure. Well, I suppose... You know, my beginning was a little bit like that. Um, I live in Northern Ireland. And as you well know, you know, we are a part of the world that have had decades, um, probably centuries of 
hardship and difficulty. And so I was born in the 70s in Northern Ireland to very challenging circumstances where we had the troubles. You know, we had a community that was in civil war and it was kind of like that black and white, you know, the, the gray challenging environment with it had the social and economic, economic difficulties, the divide and split in religious groups. And so, yeah, it didn't start out very well. Um, and there were expectations of women in the community, you know, the, the story pattern for women like myself that were in that community, in the working class Catholic community that I was born into. You simply, you know, married young, had children. And for many women at that time, you went into the shirt factory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from a young age, I loved school. So there was something deep within me, Cornelia, that knew that wasn't going to be my story. That I wanted something different. Now, being born into that environment, you naturally inherit a lot of the story from family. You know, like a woman's place is at home. Maybe, you know, most cultures, not most cultures, many cultures, women don't work. They're the homemaker. And so I very much had that story pattern in my ancestral heritage. But I was a woman with ambition and drive and I wanted more. So even though I had that imprint of starting out from challenging background, I had a vision. I loved school. I loved learning. And I just knew that there was something bigger and better for me. But I also knew that I was stepping out of the tribal beliefs and the culture and the community of what happened then. So I was in effect one of the first in my generation of say the grandchildren to actually go to university. Mm. So, you know, from that young age, 18 years old, I can remember getting a bus, a boat and a train to London and going to teacher training college. And that was difficult for a working class girl to find her way in a big city like that. So I suppose with, with my story, there came those underlying issues that many of us have of, you know, self-doubt. Am I good enough? Can I do this? Do I belong? Do I fit in? Am I rising above my station? And so my self-help journey started then because I kind of felt that I had descended, you know, in into London where people were different to me. They certainly were more middle class. You know, they had parents in different professions and they had other people in their family who'd done what they were doing that had already kind of, you know, forged the path or laid the way for them. So from then, I became really interested in self-help. And um, that was the beginning of my journey, realizing that maybe... I had a bit of work to do on me and confidence to do on me. But it didn't just happen then. You know, as we know, the, you know, the, the journey continues and, and um, the, the, the wound is there and the work is there to be done. Um, so even though I was doing what I wanted to do and I found my first teaching job in London, I was really achieving great things. I actually was suffering from anxiety and um, I also suffered from IBS. So I was doing what I wanted, but my body was actually telling me that there was something that wasn't in alignment, that I didn't believe that I deserved this more opulent life that I had shifted into and the contrast that I was beginning to find in life. Wonderful. I I know that there is so much more to this story. There's so much more that you have to share, but you definitely painted a beautiful picture, a beautiful flower petal blooming. That's what I see with your story. And thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, for all the women that you are helping, I want to be able to uh, direct the audience to your social media and your mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We only have two minutes left before this segment okay. is over. So sure. let's, let's yeah. tell the audience how they can get in contact with you on social media. Yes. So you can find me, Katrina Jones Coach, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I do spend most of my time on 
um, Instagram and Facebook, katrinajones.com. You can find me there. That's my website. And I have lots of free gifts like, you know, relaxation podcasts, um, a self-care toolkit, lots of things to help women and empower women to turn their story around and to know that when we connect with that place of calm within, we can really open up and bloom. And my book hopefully will be out later this year, which is Bloom Girl, and it is an empowerment toolkit for girls and women to build confidence, self-belief, and live our dream life. Katrina Jones, thank you so much. Please let us know when your book is ready to come out so we can give you a shout out here on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Thank you, Cornelia. Thank Thank you so so much. much. Yes, thank thank you you so much for coming on. Many blessings to you, my friend. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Cornelia Stephanie, and I'm with my next guest, Dr. Marlis Hubner. And she is educated. She's an educated life scientist, an empowerment coach, and she enables and empowers women to be their best self. And now more than ever, that is so needed in the world for all women to be in their best self. So welcome to the show and thank you for coming. Thank you, Cornelia, for having me. I'm very, very excited. It's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, I love that work, what you're doing. And I I definitely, I have a question that I want to ask you later. Uh, But for now, I want to find out a little bit about What brought you here? Because I'm sure that you have a story to share with us today that is going to inspire us with something that changed your life. Yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about my story. I I wanna say, you know, I've always like followed the path that I guess you're supposed to follow, right? So I was, you know, the good girl at school. I did my, uh, you know, I studied at university. I did my PhD, you know, in Cambridge. And on the outside, for a lot of people, I was like this superwoman almost, right? It's like, oh my God, she has a PhD and oh my God, you know, she got, um, she married this, her dream uh, man. She has two kids. She nailed a corporate job. And so like on the, you know, like everything, if you looked at it on the outside, looked like perfect. Like it was like my happily ever after. But what happened was, I want to say it's not too long ago, maybe like six, seven years ago when my kids were a little, little they're, 12, they're 11 and seven now. And so when my daughter was about, one and two, so five, six years ago, I found myself in this position of, you know, trying to run a corporate career and grow a corporate career, which I really, quite frankly, loved, and really like being in the midst of it, right? Running, juggling a household, having two kids that you have to drop off, take care of, and like being in this typical working mom struggle, right? And, um, what basically happened is it wasn't just that I found myself ending up being super depressed and burned out. It was really that I had turned into this ugly monster mom, so to speak, you know, like. Like you were, you, know, irritated. you were irritated with having to do everything that you were doing. So irritated. And it was way worse than being irritated. I was so angry. I was literally angry and I like, I was like, what is happening? I'm not an angry person. I'm usually a really, you know, good mood person, but I was literally, I woke up with anger. And so, and, and the, the thing that really broke my heart was, you know, how like during the day we, we hold, you know, we have put on our mask, right? Because we're in our profession, we have to pretend that we're holding everything together. And I always pretend that I'm holding everything together. And when I closed the door and I was at home, I was just the worst person on the planet. And I, mm-hmm. I literally like, I was so ashamed of myself. I would lose it over the little things over my kids. And it was basically my kids who had to suffer. And mm-hmm. I felt like I was failing at the most important job. And I do think, you know, through my, my now coaching work, what I've seen is that a lot of women, the reason they actually do not pursue a career is because we feel like the worst mother on the planet so many times, so often, right? And 
it, that feeling just so often triggers moms, not, or women that have, you know, very, they're very smart, that are intelligent, that have so much to give to this world, right? It basically um, makes them feel like they have to make a choice. And typically, you know, we're going to decide ourselves for our kids, but you actually really give up a whole part of you. And so I was there where I was like, everybody's right. It's true. You cannot have it all. The happily ever after is just not, you know, it's all fairy tale. It's not true. And I was at the, at the verge where I was like, I have to throw in, you know, I have to give up my career and uh, in order to make this all work and be a really good mom. And I, I was, and it was, you know, and I think the, the thing that really made me change was the day when I like pretty much almost set my fire, my kitchen on fire because I was in my kitchen trying, you know, to cook dinner, answering the phone, typing in, you know, writing an email at the same, like, like all the things you do all at the same time. And I had put oil in a frying pan and I hadn't realized that it caught fire. Oh. And so my kids were like freaking out. I was freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. And it was, I think, and, and now in retrospect, luckily that happened because that was for me like the final sign where I was like, okay, you need to change something. Like this cannot continue like this. You're not happy. Your kids suffer. Your marriage suffer. Everything suffers. And so um, I was lucky that I had a mentor in that time who, who introduced me to personal development. So I kind of started that journey. And... Um, yeah, and, and, and really found a way out, basically. Yeah, I, can, I, I totally can understand, you know, what you were experiencing with, if you, if you haven't looked at personal development yet during that time where you were like very professional and very, you know, successful in what you were doing, and then you had your household, you had your children, and and then you also what about self care and self nurturing so all these things all these balls to juggle and here you were and you basically had like a, a, a breakdown of some sort right it was like some sort of a breakdown um, that you can really break through right yeah and it's it's probably been quite a few breakdowns because there's been you know you have like these little breakdowns and you tell yourself ah oh, it's you know you're going to be fine and then you keep it together for a couple of days and the next breakdown hits you and every breakdown just gets worse right it gets it it it, it takes you really worse and so for me i was i i was suffering first from postnatal depression that wasn't uh, detected and that kind of really turned into anger and rage that also I, you know, I, the thing is you start doubting yourself. You think something is wrong. And I remember I had like all these fights with my husband. He's like, I cannot help you anymore. You need to go into therapy. And so I was convinced that there was something fundamentally wrong with me. And, but what I've actually learned now through all this development work is that if, you know, moms were in a situation where they just um, feel like, you know, everything triggers them. Our kids trigger us, right? Our husbands trigger us. Everybody's triggering us. It is really, really because there's a lot of emotional wounding that we've actually never looked at and that we've never cleared for ourselves. And anger is just an, it's, it's your mask, right? It's the way we, we express it. And it's, it's like the, the last what, how do you say, um, the, the last resource basically that we have to get all our frustration out of really not living the life that we actually want to live and being led by somebody else, right? And so for me, that was the biggest aha that I had not realized of how much I had other people lead me. And, and what I mean by that is I was trying so hard to fit into this ideal perfect mom picture and this, you know, and I work in a, in a male dominating job. So it was like, you have to be a completely different person. And it's like, it's almost like you're split personalities. It doesn't work. Right. And so I never had this feeling I, I can actually really be me. And um, it just tears you apart. Right. It just, it just really kills you. And it, and, and the reason for why I have become an emotional resilience coach is because there's so many women who are trying so hard and we're trying so hard, you know, we're telling ourselves so often all these stories of how we have to, 
you know, what we have to do in order, for example, to make it in the, in the corporate ladder, right? Like I, I, I have to work 60 hours. If I am not in the office late, if I don't answer emails late, all that kind of sort of stuff is just adding to our stress, but it's really because we're having ourselves being led by somebody else. And when you break through that wall, when you actually start asking yourself what you want and you remove that, that underlying fear, it's like, it's just, you really can break free. It's just really, really amazing. Where and do you so, live? Where do you live? I live in Germany. You are in Germany right now? I'm in Germany right now, yes. I love it. I love it. I'm from Germany, you know. I came to this country in 1978 when I was 13. So you and I actually have a lot in common because you are an anger specialist. I wrote a book on, on anger myself, but you have a gift for our audience. I wanna let the audience know about how to get the free gift because there's a lot of people right now that don't know how to access their anger. And can you tell us about how they can access that free gift? Yeah, so I've I've sent you a link. So I, th I I've seen the link on your website. I think it's on the website. And my gift right now, especially in the COVID times, is that I'm actually offering my whole methodology on how to become more emotionally resilient and really work with your emotions because emotions at the end of the day, they run our show, they decide over everything, our decisions, our behavior and everything. And so what I do have is um, I share my, my method for free for three days in an upcoming course. So next week, for example, uh, we have a three day course and it's all about really tapping into your emotions, clearing the anger, and, you know, becoming the mom you actually want to be without like beating yourself up, basically, you know, and doubting yourself all the time. Tell us how to find you on social media and where do we sign up for this free course? So I send you the link. Um, so that's how you can sign up for the free course. Uh, it should be on your um, on your website and you can uh, definitely look me up every i'm on i'm on facebook so everything is on my profile it's very okay. easy to tell us me. in case somebody's listening in the car driving listening to you tell us how to find you on social media so just look me up on facebook uh under marlis uh Hübner. okay okay wonderful i i just appreciate so much that you're out here doing this amazing work helping women and also um, their daughters, right? Helping young women, because I, I saw in the profile that you're also teaching mothers and also their, their daughters, right? On how to uh, clear the emotional energy. And with this whole thing with anger, it's so important right now, because if you are not tapping into underneath that anger, there's always a truth, right? There's right, exactly. Truth. Yeah, so that's really good. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing this powerful story with us. And we, you know, we'd love to have you come back sometime and definitely see us on social media. And let's share that link with everyone so that people can tap into that free course that you're offering. Thank you. Absolutely, we'll do. Thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for listening and for tuning in. I have my next guest ready, and her name is Naomi Damask. And Naomi is the founder at Oh My Word. And I'm going to let her tell us what that means and what else that she does. Welcome to the oh. show. Well, thank you so much for having me. And Oh My Word is my trademark signature saying. I say it all the time. And when I was looking for a name for my business, I did not want it to have the word cancer in it, even though that's what I end up, you know, I've done a lot with. And so it just seems to work because I love to bring information and connections with people to make you say, oh my word, I need to know more. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, oh my word, I'm so curious. So tell us, before we came on, you were telling me that you, because I told you, you have the shortest bio and you said that you really don't, want to you want to keep it short and sweet so tell us a little bit about your work and then tell us the story that you came to share today 
Um, so I am a breast cancer thriver. I'm a mom of two teen girls. I have a whole list of things that I've accomplished in my life, but I really want to focus right now on serving other people, really helping them with their wellness. I feel, I'm very passionate about that just because of my own journey. I end up mentoring a ton of other breast cancer survivors. And I am the founder of the Vitamin C Party. Everyone needs a good dose of vitamin C, which is community, connection, and conversation. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yes. So how, how are you feeling today? You're a breast cancer thriver, you said, right? Yes, I feel wonderful. I've, you know, I've, it's been a long journey. It's been nine, almost nine years since I was first diagnosed. And I just had a surgery in May. Um, I had my implants removed. I was having some breast implant illness. And so I had those removed and I feel fabulous. This has now been my fourth surgery and my final surgery. So I'm looking forward to just finally truly healing my body. Wow, that's fantastic. I know someone else that also had their um, breast implants removed. Uh, and just, you know, now she just feels uh, so much better back to her natural way. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So what is it that you do now with your um, service? Like how, how is it that you are out there helping women? I, I do a lot of mentoring and then I'm also a wellness consultant. So people work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I also have my vitamin C parties, which is a time for people to come together as community and really connect. And I really want to see more women collaborate together. So it's just a great way to come in, learn about other people. Also for me to learn about what I can do to help you in regards to where you're trying to go in this world. Because I feel as though if we can connect and collaborate more, it's, it's almost like building a puzzle. I feel as though like I'm this master puzzle builder. So if I can put you and someone else together and make that connection, and then just with the two of you, the power that you could have, you could be connecting with someone else. And soon you look down and you've got this amazing puzzle built. That sounds great. I love the vitamin C party. That's just, uh, you know, everybody can use vitamin C. It's, I like yeah. how you break that down. That's really cool. Um, so how are you doing that with, uh, you know, with the whole state of the world today with COVID? How are you, um, you know, staying active with your parties? Are you doing Zoom so meetings? I, I was doing Zoom meetings. I've actually put it on hold and I'm going to re regather here. But just being a teen, you know, mom of teen girls, I was doing it through the spring because before it was in person and then we shifted it all to zoom. And it was one of these things that I felt being pulled in so many directions that I would just realize that, you know what, my family has to come first. And so I sort of put everything on hold. I'm coming back to it now, now that school is going to be back in session. And I realized that a lot of these women are going to be dealing with some of the same struggles that we all are dealing with, you know, trying to juggle having a business and also being a mom and being now a teacher as well. So I think it'll be time for all of us to be able to really plug in, help lift each other up. Yes, I think that's wonderful because, you know, the more support that women have to be able to be who they are, mm -hmm. with, you know, like what you said, juggling all the balls, just the segment prior to you coming on, we were talking about this also, on, on, on how women can actually have it all and still, you know, be true to themselves and still be sane and happy and yes. healthy, right? Yes. And I think that's the whole thing is, you know what, making sure that we do put our health first. Because I think what happens with so many women is we, we do for everyone else, but we don't do it for ourselves. And we'll say, oh, we have self-care, but we're not really having self-love. And I think that's what's really important is making sure we put time aside for ourselves. Yes. I want to ask you this question. So what do you think right now? What's the number one thing that you feel that, that uh, people can do right now in the world that will help everyone? Be kind, be truly kind and come from a place of compassion and empathy because right now you never know what was going on with someone else. And we're so quick to judge. I mean, and who knows, maybe they just lost their job. Maybe they just lost a loved one. Maybe they're dealing with, you know, 
illness themselves and you can't tell from the outside, um, but maybe they're struggling. Maybe they're struggling with emotions. And I think we just have to have a place of love for people and understanding. I think if we come from that place and really think before we react, maybe they're having a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, and even asking this question, I, this is why I'm posing the question and I'm not just posing it to you, but I'm posing it to all the listeners today. What's the number one thing that you uh, can offer to everyone, to yourself and to everyone of what we can do to, you know, help all of us on the planet right now? Because if everyone thought about that every day, and thought about that one thing that they have advice for, the solution for, of something that we can do. Like you said, be kind. You know, I was thinking about it this morning and I thought one thing that people can do is really offer unconditional love, mm -hmm. unconditional love and acceptance, right? And so if everyone has that gift that they're bringing to the world of what, what's that one thing we can do, then we're, we're helping each other thrive and we're helping each other through this difficult time because now more than ever it's it's the time for us to be in our health to be in our wealth to be in our abundance right and and really support each other in that way so true i mean i i say it to my girls before i drop them off at school i'd always be say you know be kind to yourself and be kind to others and i think that's the other thing is we need to be kind to ourselves as well but give yeah. ourselves grace yeah. So even if we start there, if we start there and if we're kind with ourselves then we're kind to someone else when we're kind yeah. to each other, it's beautiful. How can people get in contact with you on social media? Um, the best way is to find me either on Instagram or Facebook. And it's my name, Naomi Damask, either way. And I love to connect. I love to really, truly connect with other people, hear other people's stories and find out how we can help each other out. Wonderful, uh, Naomi. If you know other ladies that are as amazing as you are, send them to Ashley so that we can have them on the show and feature them here. Oh, I'd love to do that. That would be great. That would be a great way to connect. That would be okay, wonderful. Perfect. Let's, I will do that. Let's definitely stay in touch and um, let us know when you're having your uh, vitamin C parties again. I will. I'd love for you guys to join. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing um, your story today. And we'll see you again soon sometime. Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And thanks, everybody. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. As you know, I love these stories of hope and introducing you to amazing people that are helping to transform and change people's lives. My next guest today is Louise Armstrong. And Louise is a relationship expert. When I was looking at her, her bio, I saw that she is an expert in relationships because of what she's had to overcome, which I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about. But not only that, she is a psychotherapist, she is a clinical hypnotherapist, and she's a counselor, she's a coach, she helps change people's lives by helping them make peace with their past. So welcome to the show today, Louise Armstrong. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. And what a beautiful, warm welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. So you, you know, you, you've got all these um, amazing qualifications that made you a coach, a therapist. You're also a best-selling international author what what got you to this point i'm sure there's a core message and i'm sure there's a story there that you're <laughs> going to tell us about yeah i'll keep it um as brief as possible and i know that a lot of coaches and healers have um come into this arena because of their own journeys and their own healing and me myself um i had no intention of ever being a coach a therapist or um, anything along those lines, although I was always very interested in people 
That was my one thing. I love, love people. But I've had a very, very traumatic relationship with my mother for all of my life, as long as I can remember. And this relationship is absolutely key. And I tried to change my mom. That's what I was trying to do all my life. And it came to a point where she told me she didn't love me and I was broken. And it was at that point that I threw myself into therapy because I was at the end of my line. Uh, my health wasn't good. I had skin cancer, I had a very messy hysterectomy and our finances were out of control. So no surprise there that everything was upside down. And so it was by throwing myself into therapy and putting my hand up, which is often the hardest thing for any of us to do, to admit that we can't work it out. And so we need to find someone who knows just a little bit more than we do. And that's what I did. And the transformation was so phenomenal. I was actually invited to train as a coach myself. And so that's what I did. I trained as a coach and from there I realized that coaching is an amazing skill and I love coaching and it's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to do. But so many of the people I helped couldn't move forward. So that's when I really began to study the mind and I qualified as a hypnotherapist and a psychotherapist and that was where the deep healing really, you know, took place. And so I did that secondary and um, I'm always learning, always learning. My latest, latest um, tool skill, if you like, is brain working recursive therapy by an amazing guy, Terence Watts, who developed this only a few years ago. It is the latest in all of the psychology therapies. And it's the only one that I know, or I shouldn't say the only one, but the only one that I know of that um, works with the brain and not the mind. So it's really, um, interesting and it's a little bit faster than other therapies so that's really why i i do what i do wow um i have not heard of this therapy that you're talking about working with the brain mm. so could you give us a little sample of what that would mean like what yeah. does that look like um what brain working recursive therapy does is it helps you to change your response to any given situation, person or past memory, because we don't have free will in the way that we know it. Basically, the brain looks for a match as to what's ever in there. So anything that's ever happened in your life, it'll look for a direct match. Once it finds that match, it triggers that neural pathway and then you end up with the emotion. And so Terence's theory is the emotion is the end of the product, if you like. Let's start at the beginning of the line where everything comes into the reptilian brain. So we're changing responses. And that is a phenomenal in, you know, past trauma, a lot of childhood trauma and incidences in life, um, addictions, um, phobias, definitely relationship issues. So it's a wonderful tool that we can help people to change how they respond to given situations that's i can see how that would be so powerful especially in the state of the world that you know many people find yeah. themselves in today where they're really being faced with um how how do they respond to what's going on with all the fear all the grief all the sadness everything that is triggering right Absolutely. Yeah. It's triggering. And so we have to have the tools. We have to have the resources. Mm. So this mm. sounds uh, wonderful, what the work you guys are doing. So you are now bringing this into your practice as well, this line. Absolutely. Of yeah, very, very much so. Um, and I'm part of a team that helps um, our National Health Service workers stay on the line. And so we're doing a lot of work as well. Um, for them so it's uh, it's it's amazing it's changed my therapy practice that's wonderful because I can see how even that work would also uh, assist people that have suicidal thoughts definitely yeah. that have suicidal thoughts because you know <clears throat> that's a that's a really big I personally have overcome suicide mm. and so wow. I know that that's amazing a big Mm, mm. when we have those thoughts and we want to take action on those thoughts mm. i always found that it's not that we want to kill ourselves it's that we want to kill the pain yeah absolutely you and there's you don't see any other way of escaping the pain and 
that's what we're all trying to do is uh is avoid the pain hide from the pain shift the pain down inside of us whatever we're doing we don't want to feel pain right so and we want to feel the pain so we don't want to kill ourselves we want to kill the pain mm -hmm. and the only way to to um to get through the pain is to really dive into it and mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And, and really feel the pain. I always say feel to heal. So I think this got this work that you guys are doing will because I mean suicide right now, it just popped in. Yeah. It, you know, national epidemic for so many people, they just don't see any way out. No. When you, were, when you were sharing your story, you talked about how, you know, you were at the end of your rope basically, mm -hmm. and that, you know, your life was um, in despair and you were in financial ruins. There were so many things that were coming up to the surface for you to take mm -hmm. a look at that mm -hmm. when other people, when, when, um, you know, when it just becomes so overwhelming, mm -hmm. they see no way out and they feel like the only way out is through death. Mm -hmm. Suicide. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, that's why I think that, you know, working together with you and um, people that um, can work through their trauma, that they can certainly overcome that. So how, how did, um, you know, you talked about your being told by your mother that she mm -hmm. didn't love you. Yeah. So the first, and I think this goes on in just about every relationship, is we're always trying to change someone else. And so it's gaining that awareness, that acceptance that my mother did love me, but not in a way that I needed to be loved and nurtured. And when we come from that place, we then show up in the world differently and we see people for actually who they are and not who they are projecting themselves to be. And so you'll constantly see people who have an opinion or they're trying to change that other person, whether it's their partner, their husband, their child, their mother, their father, their work colleague, their boss. There's so many people trying to change somebody else, but actually we're powerless to do that. So what we really want to do is the emotional intelligence, which is understand the self. So we understand why we are feeling and operating as we are. And if we're lacking something, it's up to us to fill our own needs, to fill our own love's tanks, as, as opposed to looking outside of ourselves. And so that's what was going on with my mother and I. And thankfully today, I have a wonderful relationship with her. That very destructive relationship actually was, um, had a knock-on effect with my eldest daughter. At the age of 19, she walked out of my life, complete devastation. And I'm very happy to say she's very much part of my life right now. She's now 30 years old. So it does have a familial trait. And it is really, really important to heal this relationship. And it isn't about creating a wonderful relationship with your mother. It's about healing your own wounds, your own mother wound. Because it does affect every relationship you will ever form in your life. And so I'm hugely passionate about helping people really heal that mother wound. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, there was restoration happening within your family lineage, because like you said, that you have a great relationship with your mother now, which is extraordinary mm -hmm. in itself. Mm -hmm. And um, you, have, you have a wonderful relationship with your daughter, mm -hmm. where this was definitely a cycle that was yeah. happening within your family lineage, that mm -hmm. because of your courage, by looking at all of this, and then of course doing the work, the counseling, the therapy, mm -hmm. the uh, becoming of the inner parent, would you say? You yeah, became absolutely. your own parent? Absolutely, yeah. Became your own parent and through loving yourself, you were yeah. able to then um, heal that wound, like you said, and bring the compassion and understanding for uh, the family. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it for me, it went back about four generations. So you can actually track it back, the actual familiar, you know, familiar traits. So it, yeah. it will it will continue down the generations and actually my children or oh, I have three children they all say to me it's the greatest gift you've given us is to actually stop the uh, paradigms so it is it is wonderful that's got to be a joy a major major uh joy that you you've done in your family for everyone 
-hmm. and um, that you you healed that you've healed it for your mother and you've healed it for the past generations and the future generations mm. so it's a it's a wonderful thank you and i've had the most amazing help there is no way i could have done this alone and that is the key you know it, it is really reaching out for help and I lived a lot of my time in denial and um because it is hard to reach out for help and anyone who reaches out to me whether it's a post whether it's an email whether it's getting onto that phone i admire their huge courage because i know what that takes and it's phenomenal and i really celebrate that every time it does take you know it's like we're we're um midwives you're like a midwife you're mm. supporting another person to come into their own giving birth to who they really want to become. Mm -hmm. I, I love the part of what you said is helping people, you know, make peace with their past and put their, their past into the sunset so that they can become who they're meant to be mm -hmm. in this life. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what, what is the way that people can contact you? Give mm -hmm. us uh, the information on social media, how people can find you they want to work with you they want to find out about this new uh what is it called again the new brain work uh brain working recursive therapy bwrt okay okay yeah. how can people contact you to work with you personally okay you can go to my website www.louise-armstrong.com i have a big facebook group almost six thousand women it's a closed group let's talk relationships and life and you can also find me on linkedin and my book which is change how you see yourself today is on amazon as a download on kindle or there is a paperback version as well and that book was actually built on my 12-step program i run group programs i've got a new one launching in October, which I'm super excited. Um, and it's the 12 steps that we take, six steps of healing and six, six steps of coaching. So the book goes hand in hand with the course. So it might be something you'd like to start with is um, having a look at the, the book, Change How You See Yourself Today. Because we're not changing us because we're amazing and perfect as we are, as each and every one of you is but we're changing the perspective of ourselves. And so we see ourselves very differently. Wonderful. Well, when you launch the book, be sure to let us know so that we can um, put that link with your, um, on, onto this YouTube video as well. And we okay. can let others know about your mm. fabulous work. It is, it is launched already. I have, oh. um, yeah, May the 10th, uh, I launched the book and it's still number one in, in the sub sub category in gestalt psychology. It's, um, so it's been around a little while yet. Uh, oh good, then we, yeah, we may be able to put the link with that. Yeah, I think sure. That's fantastic for people to have right now. I want to note one thing that, you know, I called you a relationship expert yeah. and I really didn't, and, and there, you, I didn't know that you had a Facebook about relationships. Oh. Just goes to show you intuitively, I was tapping into yeah. that as, you know, as what you're doing out in the world in yeah. helping people heal their relationships. It's so needed because relationships are everything. They are without them and we all crave them you know everywhere in life it doesn't matter who it's with you know whether it's mother father child lover friend work colleague we, we all want relationships don't we and and nothing is better than a happy healthy relationship it's um it's what human beings are here for really louise armstrong it's been a pleasure to have you on the show thank you so much for doing the work that you're doing thank you everybody for listening and tuning in we'll see you again next time Take care.